Hello, and welcome to our webinar today titled Accelerating Avionics Design and Deployment with Consumer Off-the-Shelf Solutions. My name is Justine Eads, and I am the Ecosystem Specialist at Real-Time Innovations and your moderator for today. Now let's go ahead and get started. So what are some of the current challenges and lack of interoperability? To name a few, every integrator needs to become an expert in proprietary single-use technology. Every solution stack will have a unique data model, data strategy. Systems are inherently brittle and hard to upgrade. The cost of reintegration and retest drives obsolescence. Vendor locked systems increase the cost of avionics devices. Now, what are some of the benefits of standards based hardware and software integration? Integration risks are minimized and costs are lowered. There's maximized reuse of previously integrated components. Communications between software, hardware, products are easier to establish and maintain. And hardware and software conforms to relevant industry standards. So now Chip will be going over the demo architecture. Thanks, Justine. So today you're going to see a very interesting uh, uh, integration of technologies. We're going to start out with a concurrent technologies uh, uh, Intel based board. Uh, underpinning all the technology. On top of that will be the Cisco Pike OS and hypervisor. Uh, on top of that will be the RTI Connects data bus. And then this will feed both the Microsoft Flight Simulator and also the Ensco iData, iData map uh, technology. So you'll be able to see how you build up an avionics uh, environment using commercial off the shelf technology or cost technology. So with that, over with you, Chris. Thanks a lot, Chip. Um, hello, uh, my name is Chris Deering and uh, I'm, as, I'm a field application engineer here at uh, Concurrent Technologies. Um, Concurrent Technologies, um, we, we design, manufacture uh, a range of high performance Intel based processors, uh, including network switches, uh, storage and software products uh, for embedded in computer uh, solutions. We manufacture all our products here at our head office in Colchester in the United Kingdom to meet the, the highest level of inspection standards for long life cycle and reliable operation. Our products are, are used today by many of the world's leading integrators within the, the defense, security, aerospace and telecommunication sectors. Um, today, I'm just going to briefly talk about the, the Intel-based processor boards that, uh, that we design and manufacture and that is being used in, in today's uh, uh, demo. Uh, we, we, we do produce a number of different uh, boards in different form factors, uh, but as I say, today I'm just going to concentrate on the, the three UVPX uh, boards that we, that we make. Um, these come in, in two different variants, uh, the legacy format, which you can see here in the bottom, bottom right uh, of, the, of the picture. Uh, this is a open VPX standard or a Vita 65 standard board, and also the newer uh, SOSA um, aligned boards that we produce. This, uh, this is shown in the, in the top right here. Um, a little quick word about SOSA, that, that stands for so, uh, Sensor Open Systems Architecture. It, it, this is a consortium that grew out of a US Department of Defense initiative uh, to define open standard electronic um, architectures uh, to ensure component interoperability, to try and help reduce costs, encourage innovation, and, and basically trying to, to ensure there's a supply of needed products. Um, all our boards are optimized for size, weight, and power, uh, making them obviously ideal for, for ruggedized military type environments. They come in, in two different variants, uh, air or conduction cooled uh, variants, uh, which provide differing uh, temperature ranges down from minus 40 up to plus 85 degrees uh, Celsius. Um, th these boards, they're, they're ideally suited for running real time optimized applications on top of a kernel or a hypervisor like the Cisco PyCos, which is going to be demoed today. Uh, of course, they'd also run either native or virtualized uh, win Windows or Linux type applications. And of course, we, we provide all the, um, the board support packages for all these, these major releases. So looking on at, at some of the actual hardware that are on the boards, uh, the, the processors that are fitted, um, these boards either come with the Intel Xeon um, D family type processor. These, these can be up to 16 cores or the, the, the lower core count um, Xeon E processor family. Um, this is obviously a lower power uh, device, but it does come with a, an ultra high definition graphics uh, GPU uh, embedded. 
Um, all our boards come with uh, class leading uh, DD4, uh, DDR4 uh, DRAM fitted, uh, up to 64 gigabytes on board. These are all sold, soldered down. Um, and we also we support a, a wide range of direct attached uh, storage devices uh, like NVMe M.2 modules, uh, SATA based uh, uh, solid state drives or SATA flash devices. Um, we, we can support up to two terabytes uh, on board uh, on some of these boards um, and even more on a carrier board or an external carrier board. Uh, some of these devices, like the M.2 and the uh, the SATA modules, they they can come as uh, with Opal 2.0 compliance. Um, this this allows self encryption, self encrypting drives. Um, basically, this is used to to um, secure your data at rest. And what we mean by um, uh, securing data at rest is if once the power has been removed from the drive, um, if they need to be unlocked again um, with uh, you know authentication details. Uh, so without that, the, your data is fully protected. So if the drive was stolen, um, it cannot be read and just put into another computer. It can't be read and without the authentication details. Um, we also provide a, an optional board security package. Um, this, this helps uh, protect the, the user's IP for, um, by locking down the board um, from, from unauthorized access. This is, we achieve this by using a number of different, different methods, which include uh, hardware, firmware, and software uh, elements. Also, all the boards come with a, a TPM, which is known as a trusted platform module. This is a 2.0 compliant module. And this, this allows you to build a, a trusted boot path. So when your system starts up, um, it, it it, may, it measures the, the uh, software that's uh, being started or loaded, and this, this stops any um, unwanted uh, malicious software being uh, or firmware being inserted into your system. So by putting all these elements together, um, you can build a very secure, high-performant, rugged system that protects the, the user's uh, IP and any confidential data that you may have on your system. So now just moving on to the connectivity, this is another main benefit with these boards um, is the high speed uh, network connectivity that's available. You know, again, ideal for the application that's going to be demoed today. Um, we have two um, high speed um, uh, Ethernet uh, planes, both control plane and data plane. The control plane, we can have up to two one gigabit Ethernet uh, interfaces. And on the data plane, uh, we can have either 10 or 40 gigabit Ethernet interface. The, the data plane can be either an electrical or optical um, uh, connectivity. Um, the separation of, of the two planes, the control and data plane, allows for um, uh, an improved quality of service um, and security of your packets. Um, we also produce a, a, number, a, a number of uh, layer two switches, uh, which enable multiple boards to be put into a, into a back plane and, and connect plane via the, the Ethernet uh, data planes or control plane. And we also have the uh, we also support the PCI Express up to Gen three. This is an expansion plane again to allow uh, expansion through your with a number of boards, and you can have up to sixteen lanes uh, with it with this bus, and so it can achieve up to sixteen um, sixteen uh, gigabytes of, of data transfer between boards. So that's very good if you want to have another uh, another more CPUs or a GPU or an FPGA board in your system. Now we've just got a couple of examples here of. Here we have a, uh, a system with a number of our uh, processor boards all linked up to one of our uh, layer two switches, all connected via the 10G uh, network on the back plane, and then output via the 10G uh, uh, network interface to, uh, to another system. Uh, this is obviously ideal with, with the number of cores you and, and, and boards you can, this is ideally suited for a high performance uh, compute type application or a virtualized application. And then uh, a couple of other examples here that we've got at the top uh, an image processing type system where you've got a processor board with the gpu uh, communication via the uh, pci express across the back plane uh, direct ingest of um, of image feed into the gpu and then input output via the uh, the 10g high speed uh, network and then at the bottom uh, another example over here you could have a number of fpgas or gpus um, connected to one of the processors we we provide a we actually produce a, a an artificial intelligent acceleration card uh, based on the Intel FPGA chip, uh, which is which is useful for for doing um, inference at the edge in a in an embedded type environment.
So I hope, I hope that's given you a, a, a quick overview of, of what concurrent technologies uh, can provide from a hardware perspective. I'll now hand over to Oliver at Cisco. Hello and good afternoon. My name is Oliver Kühlert. I'm the uh, Technical Marketing Product Manager at Cisco. We are a supplier of software for embedded devices, mostly targeted for safety and security. We started about 30 years ago with services for embedded devices and soon had our own um, operating system based on Linux, which is called Elinos and uh, comes with a development environment target to um, system and application designers. In parallel to that, in the about 2000, um, we started being a distributor for LynxOS and um, supporting avionics systems here in Germany. And we got in contact with many certification projects at that time. In parallel at the time, that was about 2003, we started development of our own operating system, which is Airing 653 compatible and is based on a virtualization solution. And at that point in time, we stopped the distribution of uh, LungSoyce and came to the market with our own operating system called PyCos. PyCos is a very small microkernel. It's only about 6,000 lines of code and is um, modular, consisting of um, architecture support and uh, platform package support, which is more or less uh, close to a VSP. The entire microkernel runs in kernel mode, while the um, software which sets up the software that runs in user mode and starts the different partitions. Um, those partitions have their small operating system level in user space and are strictly separated from the startup, which means that the PyCos system software assigns strict resources in time of memory, I.O., and time. The whole thing is designed for safety and security as well. And it uses para virtualization, which needs the operating system to do minor adjustments in the kernel, but um, allow the highest level of performance. We have several guest operating systems, which can run on top of PyCos, such as POSIX, Airing 653, which is the avionics uh, solution, Linux, ADA, Android, or any legacy operating system which you like to port on top of PyCos. PyCos is also FACE compliant. FACE is a DoD standard, which is called Future Airborne Capability Environment. And this FACE standard is quite big and consists of multiple levels. In terms of PyCos, we are supporting the OSS, the operating system segment. And there are different profiles based on security, safety, and we can cover those different profiles by different kind of operating systems on running on top of PyCos. For example, in order to cover Dell A uh, applications, we have our Airing 653 environment, also called Apex. For lower level and more functionality, we have POSIX, and we can even go down to a full set of a complex operating system, fully fledged like a Linux, but of course, as Linux has many million lines of code, we are going down to a, a level of E. The great of, uh, advantage of PyCos is that you can have the same thing in parallel, which means you can have a Linux running with a whole set of features parallel to a phase application, which is certified to uh, the highest Dell level, and the PyCos operating system makes sure that there is no interference between those partitions. Uh, typical use cases are here, if you have a complex system, you would divide it into different uh, safety levels and then certify only the very critical stuff at the very highest level. In addition to that, um, this strict partitioning helps you to resolve licensing issues if you are also using open source in your design applications. PyCos is also the first operating system that has been certified in the railway market up to the highest certi certification safety level, SIL-4. And um, this has been accomplished 
by transferring the PyCOS time partition mechanism on top of the multi-core processor. And we've also done this um, transition in the avionics world. And we can proudly say that PyCOS is compliant to the CAS 32A positioning paper, which requires very strict requirements to the operating systems and applications. We have done a whole lot of modifications, for example, to have fine-grained locking, which reduces the interference between the cores to a minimum on operating system level. When it comes to hardware, we are using the uh, cache partitioning me methods um, depending on the uh, hardware architecture we're using. When it comes to application development, which of course must be CAS32 compliant as well, Cisco has a whole lot of experience which helps the system architect to configure the system in a CAS32A compliant way. At the end of this talk, we are going to show a avionics demonstrator. In this case, uh, Chip has already done a small introduction. And here we are looking a little bit more deeper into the operating system side. So the data which is coming from the flight simulator goes via UDP to a POSIX partition. And this POSIX partition acts as a gateway and converts the data to objects which can be sent via the RTI data bus to uh, different partitions. One of those is an Elinos partition, which processes the data and then forwards the data via the RTI bus to iData. Um, this part is currently running on an external top. In the next version of our system, we are also going to run the iData in the Elinos partition with the graphic stack running on the concurrent board. The entire architecture is phase, so the and MOSA compliant as it complies with the requirements from the modular open system architecture. It uses standardized methods of interfaces between the system components, which in this case are coming from RTI, which is the RTI DDS communication. PyCOS has gone through uh, several certification projects. We had the 178B Dell App projects in the past, and we are ready to do 170C A Dell A projects in the future. We had several railway and automotive projects. In addition to that, um, we have a common criteria EL3 plus common criteria certification passed by the BSI. And in this case, we certified the entire microkernel as well as the system software is running on top of the microkernel. The entire construct of the system software and the microkernel is called the separation kernel. Um, when it comes to certification, here is an overview which has been pre-certified. So the green file part on the system is what comes from Cisco, which means we have pre-certified architect the documents for the system software for the kernel and um, several architecture support packages. As the Customer typically comes with his own board. The platform support package in this case needs to be certified in the context of the project. In addition to that, we have the application in running on top of PyCOS, which typically in a real project is the major part. But most of our runtime environments, like the Erring 653 or the POSIX, are certifiable according to the required standards. When it comes to do the certification on the customer sites, which in the avionics world, you can always only certify entire system, we provide so-called certification kits, which helps you with all the certification aspects. We provide the full documentation, including traceability by numbers with tests and requirements. And you can reuse those requirements and test numbers in your certification project to build up the traceability. That's from Cisco's contribution to the demo, and we are now going up to the next level, um, which in this case is RTI. And Chip will now talk about the Connex DDS system. Thanks, Oliver. So I'm uh, Chip Downing with Real-Time Innovations. Uh, I uh, also am the uh, chair of the FACE uh, 
business working group outreach team. Uh, so I've been in, uh, involved with these standards for uh, over over 10 years. Uh, so Real-Time Innovations is the number one uh, software company for autonomy. Uh, we have over 1,700 design wins today, uh, 750 research programs, and we're growing quite well at 25% plus. We have uh, headquarters in Silicon Valley. Uh, we also have got uh, offices in Colorado, Spain, and Singapore, and our employees are worldwide. Now, part of the reason our growth is autonomy. We're entering this age of autonomy, and we're going through a transition where instead of having human-controlled flight or human-controlled vehicles, you now need to have autonomous vehicles. And these autonomous vehicles need to have lots of sensors, lots of cameras, lots of LIDARs, radars on those platforms. So you need a connectivity fabric to connect up all that information that's coming off these sensor platforms. D Connects DDS is that product that, that enables that, enables it quite well. Uh, so we actually uh, have uh, at least half the uh, leading uh, electric vehicle and autonomous vehicle startups uh, globally now using RTI. And uh, a lot of these programs are coming in uh, between 2021 and 2022. We may actually announce something uh, in late Q4 this year. No, DDS is an industry standard. It's, it's managed by the object management group that also manages uh, other standards like UML, SysML, uh, XML, and, and others. Uh, it's uh, an open standard. You can download the standard uh, from the object management group site. Uh, there's, we have uh, over 12 different competitors out there. So uh, uh, we're, uh, the industry is well served with a, a wide range of DDS solutions. Uh, their DDS standard is actually in three parts. The, the, the top part is the DDS API. This is the API that developers write to. So uh, they have a common set of uh, routines that really are setting up a platform and then doing publishing and subscribing. That, that's it. And this is uh, independent of uh, operating system or language or anything else. It's just a set of APIs that allow you to uh, you know, either publish data or receive data from uh, pu publishers on the network. The bottom part is the, uh, the RTPS protocol, real-time publisher support protocol. This allows everybody to uh, uh, speak the same language on the wire. So if you want, need to have interoperability between different types of applications and systems, you want to make sure that it has the, we're speaking the same language on the wire itself. That's what RTPS does for you. And then uniquely, we have a security plugin. These are plugins that actually go on top of existing uh, uh, platforms. So you can do authentication, encryption, and other types of capabilities. So we, once you have a working DDS system, you can now then layer in uh, security on top of that and you can specify security, not for an entire wire, but for each data element, each topic, you can actually have different types of encryption and authentication for. This makes it very good for multi-level secure and multi-domain operations where you actually don't want to secure the entire pipe because it's, it's inefficient. Uh, you want to secure, uh, let's just say, position or target data at a very high level, and you want to secure things that are uh, might be able to find more easily like weather data at a, a lower level. So it, it gives you that uh, range of capabilities and you can actually, for different types of data that may be owned by different entities, you can actually give those different types of data its own security policy. This, as I mentioned before, this is publish, subscribe. It's peer to peer. There's no broker, there's no servers. You have two endpoints that talk to each other. It's data centric where typically you have the same data model, underlying data technology between all of these uh, endpoints. Uh, really interesting is loosely uh, coupled. So you can actually add new technology as required uh, and uh, remove technology. So if you need to upgrade a system, you can do that very quickly by just putting a new technology in and pulling out the old entity off the node. In non-certified systems, we also have discovery. So as you come up uh, and need to uh, uh, gather data from a set of uh, publishers, you can now query, find out which type of uh, publishers have the right type of data in the right time frame, and you can then connect with that data and go forward. It uh, doesn't quite work on certified systems where you want to have a static uh, capability there, but outside of certified systems or safety certified systems, this works quite well. We also have a real-time quality service, so you can actually set up uh, whether you want to retransmit packets if you need to get every one, or just take the latest packet of data if in case you miss something. By design, because it's peer-to-peer, -peer, it's inherently parallel. 
So you can now scale up systems into millions. And in one case, a, a Navy ship has uh, over 10 million published subscribe pairs on this essentially huge data sensor platform. Uh, this, this enables this massive scalability uh, throughout the industry. And uh, it, it also allows, uh, removes that brittleness because you can now scale systems, scale them back, change them, modify very quickly. And of course, as I mentioned before, we have standards-based security. Now, what's this look like graphically is we come up with a notional idea of a data bus. It's like a database that has uh, information at rest, data at rest. This is data in motion. So this is data moving on the wire. And so you can have different publishers and su subscribers subscribe uh, or attach to this data bus and collect or uh, uh, receive data. Uh, you can also uh, connect up uh, other types of devices and different types of systems. Now, the nice thing about Connect DDS, if you take a look at what happens on the, on the right-hand side, you've got your application logic. That's really that API that you want to have with your application, your business logic. But you think about how many different ways people have done addressing and IP uh, allocation and uh, serialization and trying to do their own types of quality of service. When you combine, have a very large system and everybody's doing this slightly different, it makes it very brittle. It makes it very hard to change. In most cases, uh, people won't touch something because it is so brittle. They don't know the impact of changing one of these parameters. DDS takes all that off the table and puts that in this very standardized way. So all the application developers, no matter what platform you're developing on or what language you're using, have the same uh, logic uh, uh, connecting up to the uh, wire. Uh, it's also nice for connecting up different types of systems. Maybe you don't have a shared uh, data model, maybe different types of data model. It's really important also when you bring in legacy systems, you can now bring in uh, legacy systems or other types of data that may not have a data-centric technology uh, through something called a routing service that sets up the data to be put into the data model so it can be shared. Now, taking a look at an aircraft, you can uh, see that it fits in uh, different ways. Uh, you may have a you know large flight control bus that uh, actually is taking a look at different types of control surfaces uh, and sensor platforms. Uh, that'll be for the flight con uh, control computer to the front of the aircraft. You also have multiple mission computers on an aircraft that may have its own type of data. Uh, and also, you may have sensors throughout the aircraft that can be brought into both flight controls and also the, the mission computer. We are uh, highly aligned with the global services and standards. We have uh, over 20 standards just in aerospace and defense that we support, and most of these are built on top of DDS. So if you think about uh, ROS and ROS2, ROS2 is built on top of DDS. One of the big capabilities there is, is uh, DDS underneath that uh, technology. We're also part of FACE. Uh, we're the first uh, uh, FACE certified conformant transport services segment. Uh, that was uh, very unique. We also have DL-178C DALE certification evidence for both Connects uh, DDS, and, but also the FACE TSS. So you can actually very quickly put this into a system, combine it with the other COTS certification technology that's in this webinar, and get to market very fast. Also reduce risk. It's typically certification integration are two of the highest risk capabilities. Those are now off the table with this, with this uh, integrated stack. So this looks, uh, as, as I mentioned before, we put together these joint uh, uh, partner uh, solution stacks with uh, a wide range of, of suppliers, and it makes it very easy, as I mentioned before, to take off the uh, uh, integration risk uh, and uh, be able to very quickly deploy this inside your next program. So with that, we'll go over to Mike at Ensco. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Chip. I appreciate the intro. Uh, my name is Mike Tolfrey uh, with Ensco Avionics. Uh, I'm in charge of business development for the uh, visualization product lines, so iData and iData map, along with along with IGL. Uh, for the final piece of this uh, COTS integrated demo, uh, we'll be talking about the visualization aspects uh, or the human machine interface uh, capabilities for this integration. Uh, for this demo, uh, iData and iData map uh, were used to design the HMI uh, to display the flight data coming from the Microsoft Flight Simulator through the Connect DDS. Uh, publishing um, and as we subscribe to the data to uh, visualize the, the application going forward. Ensco Avionics was uh, formed back in 1983 um, with out of upstate New York. Uh, has two main operating groups as part of our portfolio. 
Uh, our first port part of our portfolio is our engineering and certification solutions, uh, which focus on airworthiness for both uh, military and commercial uh, programs. Uh, these activities include domain expertise uh, in DO-178 and DO-254. Our other portfolio offering is our vision systems products, um, tools and solutions. This is where the iData map and iData software, HMI software development kits reside, um, as well as our IGL product, which is our safety critical graphics renderer for those applications that where a GPU might be overkill for your display. So we'll start off by, by what is taught, what is iData? Uh, iData is a, a set of tools uh, that enables the creation of uh, data-driven behavioral graphics uh, for cockpit displays. Uh, this is uh, a way for applications to be extremely portable uh, across the different environments, whether it be your embedded environment, uh, simulation environment, or a handheld device. Uh, the modeling environment with the iData tool suite um, allows for an abstraction of, from the graphics development to where the actual graphics are going to be residing. Uh, and therefore makes the applications extremely portable and allows us to uh, run in many different environments. The core functionality uh, of the iData tool suite is based off of these four building blocks uh, with graphics being at the, the lowest level. Uh, this would be the area where you define how you, the look and feel of your graphics, um, how your display is going to be um, visualized by um, anybody interacting with the HMI, whether it be a pilot or a ground station operator, um, and it allows us uh, to be able to create the geometry, uh, the clipping and masking, import your, your texture-based fonts, um, anything you'd expect to do within a graphics tool suite. On top of the graphics, um, you add behaviors, and this is where the animations for your, for your graphics uh, are reside, uh, whether it be a rotation behavior, uh, or a scale behavior, a rotation behavior would be something for like a compass or a fuel indicator. And these behaviors can be attached to a single piece of graphic or a group of, graphic, group of graphics and are tied to name memory variables. In this particular application that we're talking here today, those variables are being populated uh, from Connect DDS product into the iData, into the iData environment. Um, on top of those behaviors, you can add some logic to them for some more specific capabilities within your graphics, within your functionality. And then on top of uh, the different logic aspects, you, we've added uh, some advanced features into the product to make our customers' lives a little easier as new technology gets put into the cockpit environment, uh, including Airing 661, uh, multi-touch capabilities with 10 touch points and some gestures. Um, as well as certification out of it for our iData product uh, up to level A. The other portion of the display that we're looking, that we'll be showing off here today is our iData map product. Uh, the iData map is a map development toolkit. It's, uh, it's not a solution, it's a, a toolkit that allows developers to design uh, 2D or 3D digital maps from the ground up. Um, and has uh, features for map interactions, which include uh, panning and zooming and rotations, uh, orientation of your map, either from a north up or heading up capabilities. We can render obstacles in both the 2D and 3D environment, whether that be uh, national airspaces, boundaries, runways, uh, or other types of obstacles that you'd, you'd uh, load into your system uh, via iData map and uh, the iData map plugin architecture. ID map supports multiple map overlays uh, with regards to DTED or any type of raster type images like CATRG or enhanced CATRG as, as well as vector for boundaries and satellite imagery as well. The nice thing with iData map is the fact that iData map can run in multiple instances. Uh, therefore, you can have a 2D and a 3D instance in the same display. You can have two 2D maps uh, in the same environment. And each one of those instances are a standalone application, our standalone map, therefore they can be controlled independently. The other nice thing about that is that everybody, all the map in the information is from the same database. Therefore you're guaranteed geosynchronization uh, along your 2D, 3D uh, environments, as you can see at the, at the bottom right. We have certification evidence uh, for our iData map product uh, as well. Um, and uh, the architecture for the product is open uh, allowing for different plugins to be created 
whether it be loading in nav aids, um, FAA airports, or different types of symbology that you would want to have on your 2D or 3D digital terrain. In this particular demonstration integration that was put together, um, iData interacts with each one of these components in different ways and requires different things from these components. Um, as Chip was describing earlier on, um, RTI is used as a data bus that was uh, publishing information from the Microsoft Flight Simulator going through the concurrent and Pike OS environments. And an iData's open architecture allowed for a very in easy integration with the RTI connected DDS as a subscribe. Therefore, we were receiving all the flight information from Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, to control the ADI and the HSI as well as the own ship to accurately represent the, 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 the display and the environment for, for which it's running. In an embedded environment, um, iData and iData Map have a very portable and efficient runtime that can be integrated into the different RTOSs with Pyco S as the RTOS for this particular uh, demonstration. Uh, iData and iData Map uses the file system, uh, uses the memory and resource management from Pyco S as well as semaphores and networking capabilities. With concurrent, uh, the iData Map and iData Runtime's uh, small efficient footprint resides within the uh, CPU and GPUs for, uh, from concurrent. And we end up using the uh, integrated OpenGL drivers, uh, either OpenGL SC10 or OpenGL SC20 to display the graphics to the particular displays themselves. Um, with that, I will turn this back to Justine and thank everybody on this webinar for uh, your attention. Great, thank you, Mike. So just a quick summary. What are the benefits of consumer off-the-shelf avionics solution stacks? It removes multi-supplier integration risk. It enables rapid new technology insertions with standards-based products. It reduces the cost and risk with commercial certification evidence and accelerates the time to deployment. And now we will begin the video. Hi, aerospace technology and certification experts Cisco, RTI, Ansco and Concurrent Technologies like to welcome you. Avionics systems came a long way and got more and more complex over time. With its certification efforts rose and the need for support in this field. In this video we will present you an avionics demo setup that is capable to be certified to the highest levels in terms of DO 178C and FACE standard for highest airborne safety. Our demonstrator consists of three laptops and an avionics single board computer by Concurrent Technologies. The right laptop is running ENSCO's iData tool suite, which receives data from the laptop on the left that is running Microsoft Flight Simulator. Between both laptops, Concurrent Technologies VPX TRE 5X MSD hosts Cisco's real time operating system and hypervisor PicoS and RTI's connectivity framework Connex EDS. For monitoring reasons, the third laptop is running Cisco's IDE Codeo that can start, stop and analyze software on the TRE5X MSD. This is how the demonstrator works. On concurrent single board computer, PicoS is running a POSIX and embedded Linux Elinos partition as guest operating systems. POSIX serves as gateway that is receiving data from flight simulators such as speed, position and altitude. POSIX is also sending this to the Elinos partition where it is processed. At this point, RTI's Connex DDS and iData tool suite come into play. The processed data is distributed via RTI's Connex DDS bus and received by the laptop that is running the iData tool suite. iData provides a robust and flexible development framework to easily design, develop, prototype and deploy rich graphics for any target display application regardless of platform. In our setup, it displays flight simulator data. RTI software allows applications to exchange data in real time and provides the non-stop availability and security essential for mission critical systems. The Connex data bus enables applications to work together as one integrated system, significantly reducing development, integration and maintenance costs. 
Cisco's Eclipse-based Codeo supports system architects with graphical configuration tools and is the development environment for PyQuest and Elinos. It provides all the components software engineers need to develop embedded applications, guided configuration, remote debugging, target monitoring, remote application deployment and timing analysis. In our setup, Codeo starts, stops and monitors each partition individually. On the left side you see each module listed. A simple mouse click can handle the modules. Concurrent Technologies designs a range of high-performance input processor boards, switches, networking, storage and software products for use in embedded computing solutions. In our joint solution, the ready-to-use VPX system is the hardware basis for PyQoS, Elinos, Connex DDS and can also provide Ensco's iData modeler. Now let's see how this works together. If you're a pilot, please don't do risky maneuvers like we did. But since we are technology experts, you can trust in our solution. Great. I do want to just say if you wish to contact anyone, you can go ahead and see the contact information here. And please let us know if you have any additional questions. Thank you.